Hi, this is Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team, giving you the word on the street, talking Indiana real estate. Hey, if you're thinking about moving to the uh, greater Indianapolis area or relocating to McCordsville, Indiana, you're gonna wanna take a look at these three uh, townhomes. Uh, very popular models by Pyatt Builders. Pyatt's been, uh, they're a local builder, if you can imagine that, and they've been doing this for about 15 years and carved out a real night niche for themselves in this marketplace. Now, buying a new home does not have to be a nine month ordeal. Heck, that would scare me too. So uh, let me show you what I mean. Uh, let's go take a look at these uh, three homes that are ready to go. Okay, we're in the Uptown model. Uh, this one is 2,021 square feet. It is a three bedroom, two and a half bath. And I think you're really gonna like some of the features that it has. Um, you step inside and it's got a nice little foyer here. Uh, powder room right off of it. Drop zone for all the uh, book bags and uh, boots and mittens. And then into the garage, which I really like this. I hate those garages where you get in and you can hardly get out of the vehicle because your elbows are hitting the wall. But this one has a lot of room, has good storage space, furnace room, and then you got this bump out here. And you know what? Normally you'd put the lawnmower and everything there, but heck, you're not mowing grass at this place. So uh, they take care of all the outside stuff and uh, you get to enjoy uh, the inside of your home. It brings us in. Uh, a little coat closet here, right inside the door. And uh, open concept here. So you're standing at this uh, good size island, big sink. You got your uh, dining area right in front of you here. And then over into your uh, living area. Lots of natural light. You really have to like that in this uh, unit. Or for that matter, everything Pyatt builds um, really has a lot of natural light. This does have some room for uh, photos and paintings and that type of thing. Tucked over in this corner here is a nice little office, perfect for working from home. Or you wanna kick the kid in here to do some homework that they don't wanna do. Track the kitchen, quartz countertops, tile backsplash, you've got uh, electric uh, cooktop, all new appliances. This water should tucked under the counter here by the sink. Good size pantry. Okay, let's go see what the upstairs has to offer. Got carpeted stairway, cuts down on the noise. You come to the top of the stairs, you got a little loft area here. Big enough that, uh, yeah, you can put a TV in here and split the uh, people's activity zones. You also have a nice little balcony here. Chill out. Come down the hallway this way. Imagine we got a, oh, got a big storage closet. Okay. And we have two bedrooms here. Decent sized closet. These aren't big, but this is a 2,021 square foot house. And I'd say they're big enough, they have good natural light, which I like. Decent closet. Okay. Got a shared bath here with uh, dual vanities. Got a uh, linen closet. And then I like this, you have a door to the uh, commode and the shower, so two people can be using the bathroom at the same time. We'll go down to this end. You've got your laundry area up here. And then we're into the master. This is pretty decent size. And you gotta love the windows. But uh, I mean, they've got two nightstands, a queen, chest of drawers. And there's room in here for a wing chair, maybe another uh, chest of drawers, um, like a thin boy. You could do that on both sides for that matter. And then you're into the bathroom. You've got a tile floor. You've got a nice vanity, double vanity. It's not real long, but it does have the makeup counter. So it's a nice combination. Pretty decent sized master bedroom closet. Commode. 
You've got the uh, linen closet. And you've got a nice tiled shower with both a seat and a ledge. Um, so nicely done. All in all, nice master suite. I think this upstairs actually um, is well laid out and really provides um, really additional functionality to this unit. Total price on this one is going to be about $395 with um, a good number of amenities added into it, okay? Uh, so that's base price plus, you know, about $35,000 worth of, uh, of extras to it. Okay, let's go check out the next one. Okay, this is the Midtown. This one is uh, 2,337 square feet. Nice little entry porch, covered. And this one's got a different design to it. I uh, have to see if you like this. Okay, you've got a pretty big open entryway here. And you almost have a suite, of, well, you do have a suite effect, okay? So you have like a family room here. And then you have a decent sized bedroom right next to it. And then next to it is a full bath. So you really do have a suite. And then you've got your garage entry here. Now this is a narrow garage. You see there's like a six inches on each side of the door. That other garage that we just looked at a minute ago is so much bigger and uh, really nice. But this is a two car garage. And imagine you got a coat closet here. Okay, we'll go upstairs. Carpeted stairs. Lots of natural light. Okay, this one is open concept, but it's split a little bit. You've got your dining area over here and your living area over here. But it still is open so that if you're standing here working, you can talk to everybody. It's great for entertaining because everybody can be in all three rooms and it works. Little balcony, pretty good size. Catch the whole flow from this end. I like this that you have a true dining room or dining area. It's nice. Got like a pantry closet right here. Convenient. Got a powder room. And I like this is that you've got this uh, home office space back here. You could use it for other purposes as well. Uh, you just have to be creative as to what worked for uh, your personal situation but it could also work as an office. You could put French doors on this if you wanted. Decent space. Now this, you gotta check out. I mean, it's got a big overhang on this big island and you've got four big stools here. And there's just a big island. That's all you can say. You've got another pantry here. You've got tile backsplash. Eh, halfway soft clothes. You got quartz countertops, you have stainless steel appliances, electric cooktop, nice kitchen. Good work uh, flow there. Okay, so let's go upstairs, see what we've got here. So this is going to be level number three. Getting my workout on these stairs today, just finished the leg workout. It's not a good combination. Okay, so we have uh, a bedroom at this end with a decent sized walk-in closet. and it has a full bathroom of its own. Laundry room, big linen closet in the hall here. And now we're into the master. This one's got a king, two nightstands, a chest of drawers, and there's room for more. And then we come over to the master bathroom Dual vanities again, not real long, but it does have the makeup counter, which is nice. Linen closet, the walk-in closet with a window at the end so you can see how your clothes are gonna look in the natural light. Commode room, you could put a door on that if you wanted. And you got a nice shower situation with a seat, nicely tiled. So all in all, Nice master bath and 
nice total master bedroom setup. Okay, this one's on three levels. It's got essentially three bedrooms and three and a half baths. And ticket on this one is like 378. Now on um, these move-in ready homes, if you close by April 30th, you get a 4.99% interest rate. And that's fixed rate for 30 years. That's not a teaser rate now. That's fixed rate for 30 years, 4.99% if you close by April 30th. Okay, let's take a breather for a second and talk about something that's pretty important. You know, builders have procedures and it takes a little forethought on your part so that you can make them work for your benefit. To learn how I can help make uh, your home buying experience a uh, enjoyable and smooth one, um, and at no cost to you, check out this video that my staff and I have put together um, because you'll be glad you did. Okay, we're going into the Metro. This is a bigger unit. It is uh, 2,400 square feet plus, and uh, it has some interesting features too. Okay, this one has a different orientation from the last one. This one you walk in and you are into your house on the first level. We've got a walk-in closet here. You come in, the uh, kitchen has a decent sized island. It's open to the living space. Not quite as much natural light as maybe in the uh, last two models that we looked at. Does have three stools tucked under the island. Refrigerator will go here, tile backsplash, step in uh, some pantry, quartz countertops, stainless steel appliances. Okay. And then over here you have powder room, little drop zone. And we've got the uh, narrow two car garage with this model as well. If I have a complaint about this one, it would be that it does not have a dining area. I thought the last model that we were in was really nice in that regard. Um, it, it, the uh, dining area at one end and living at the other. Okay, but this one has some other things going for it. So let's go upstairs and take a look. I think you'll like this part of the house better, or at least I did. You come up and uh, you have this big family room here with lots of natural light. You've got the balcony, good size. You've got this cabinetry and desktop here. I don't know, in my house, they'd probably collect a lot of junk. You might be able to think of some good use for it. Coming down the hall, you have a great big closet here for linens or books or games or junk. Okay, we've got a good size master here. Double vanities. I'm not sure why they didn't carry that all the way to the wall. Nicely tiled shower with a seat. Commode room and walk-in closet. And you've also got a linen closet tucked in behind the door here. And right around the corner, you've got the laundry room. And you've got a half bath so that if people are up here in the uh, family room that uh, they have the use of that privately. Okay, but there's more. Like I said, this is a different floor plan than the last two. It's larger, it's 2,400 square feet. You come up here and you have a loft area. This is your third family living area in this house, which is kind of interesting. You don't see that too often. Big closet here. Okay, now we've got a bedroom at this end of the house that's pretty decent size. It's got a good walk-in closet. Come down the hall. You have another bedroom with not quite as big a closet. It does have a window. Like I said, it lets you see what your clothes look like in natural light. 
And then you have this retreat room, which is actually uh, uh, another area where you can uh, hang out, put desks. Heck, you could work from home up here. So interesting. And there's a full bath to go with these three or two bedrooms up here. So you have two bedrooms, the loft and the retreat. Um, so just <laughs> a whole lot of joint space in this home. It's 2,400 square feet and the ticket on it is like 379. And again, if you move in by or close, excuse me, if you close by April 30th, you have that 4.99% uh, interest rate. Okay, got a couple more things to show you here. It's pretty interesting. Not only uh, there's one more model, and uh, also there's a development across the street that you're gonna wanna know about. So we'll walk down here and take a look at it. This uh, first phase of this uh, community is about done, or at least it's under construction. This section here will be opening soon, and it will kind of mirror the one that's just being completed here. Now, if you uh, build from scratch, it takes about five months from contract. Uh, that gives you uh, time to get ready to sell your current house if you have one. And uh, we can get it sold for you in the uh, best price, quickest fashion, and uh, with the least hassle. Now, if you're undecided about uh, whether you need to buy or sell first, uh, this is not my first rodeo, so please feel free to give me a call. I'll be glad to sit down and talk out the uh, pros and cons and uh, all the different options that are available. And hey, then you can be the judge for yourself, what works best for you. By the way, we offer a free room by room analysis. There's no cost or obligation. And I guarantee you that I will help make you money and save you money. My staff and I have uh, prepared a short film about this, uh, highlighting 13 key points that will help you make the most money when you sell your house. Plus I'll share secrets on how I've sold my last five houses in a grand total of less than 30 days. Okay, this building's going in right here. It will have a model that we did not get a chance to look at, and that one is 2,800 square feet. That'll take you into the low 400s. So you have options from uh, 2,000 to 2,400 to 2,800 square feet. And as we uh, walk to the end of the uh, community here, across the street here, uh, let's see if we can see it down the way there, you can see uh, construction going on down there but there will be 48 acres of what they call the mccord square this is going to give a vibrant downtown feel um, if you're familiar with fishers indiana think uh, the nickel plate district where you have uh, government offices you have an amphitheater where they have music in the summertime and uh, there will be shops on the lower level restaurants and shops and then uh, up above, you'll have uh, some uh, housing. So um, maybe you've heard uh, Zillow's just named Indianapolis the fourth hottest housing market in the country. And good lots are like good houses. They can go fast. So if there's something here that interests you, by all means, uh, give me a quick call or text and we'll get you registered and we'll give you the best service uh, to take care of your needs. Accordsville just northeast of Indianapolis. It's near the shores of Geist Reservoir, which is the state's second largest reservoir. It sports 8,600 residents, it's 10 minutes from the interstate, and it's a 25 minute drive to downtown Indianapolis. The household income is on average 96,000, and unemployment is below the national average. Children attend either the Mount Vernon school systems or Hamilton Southeastern, both of which are rated A plus by the state. The average home is valued at 368,000. And one of the favorite homes I helped clients buy was this classic four bedroom beauty set on the back of a cul-de-sac. It had the cleanest inspection report of any property I've ever been involved with. Besides its Geist location and the boost property values get from that fact, being a next door neighbor to the much larger city of Fishers gives it all kinds of opportunities for food, fun, shopping, and jobs. So if you're considering moving to the greater Indianapolis area, you'll be sure to want to pick up one of our relocation guides. It's free, there's no obligation or cost. And uh, hey, my staff and I have prepared the ultimate uh, relocation guide. You can pick up your copy in the comment section below. Coming up, I'm going to share some of the top parks and recreational activities that are available, practically in your own backyard. Fishers has done a really bang up job with its parks and rec department. 
They've got 25 parks, over 600 acres, 61 sports fields. You can rent a pavilion or an event facility. There's two sledding hills, three fishing ponds, and four creeks to stop around in. And if you have any energy left, hey, there's 131 miles of trails that you can walk and hike. Hey, or you can head on over to the Geist Waterfront Park. You can rent a kayak or a stand-up paddleboard or head out on the lake. Geist Reservoir has a full-service marina, the Geist Marina, or you can head over to the public launch ramp. But get there early, because it gets busy. The reservoir itself has 1,890 surface acres. It's the second largest in the state. You can tube, you can ski, you can swim, hey, or you can just chill. There's a lot of that going on. The bass fishing's pretty good. They have tournaments all summer long. Or, hey, you can putz around and do, you know, the multi-million dollar home tour. There are other options. You can become a member at the Indianapolis Yacht Club. And no, you don't have to own a yacht. Lynn and I got married there. It was a great time. One of our favorite things to do is to boat up to restaurants. Be sure to check out Woofies. Check out these music and entertainment options. You won't believe all the shows you can take in. I'm sitting outside the, what will be, the new Fishers Events Center. This is slated to open in December of 2024. It is a massive project. It's uh, $170 million and will anchor a $550 million project that oh, will encompass this entire area with shops and restaurants and other fun things to do. This will be home to the Indy Fuel, which is a minor league hockey team uh, of the Chicago Blackhawks. And it'll they'll also host other sporting events uh, including the uh, Fisher's Freight, which will be an indoor football league team that will open, I believe, in 2025. Um, it will also host uh, music and comedy and theater and seat anywhere from 6,500 to 8,500 people. And this is all within walking distance of the yard. Yeah, Nickel Plate Amphitheater in Fisher's, Indiana. This uh, facility seats 6,000 people, lawn style seating. They have a full slate of different kinds of music throughout the summertime and fall. Uh, something for everybody. One of the nice things is you can eat at one of the local uh, restaurants, come watch the show, enjoy it, and then go finish the night off at a local pub. Hey, this is a ticket you might want to score. Okay, our music tour continues. We're at Connor Prairie, which is a large regional uh, tourist attraction. It is open year-round. They have a variety of activities uh, including hot air balloons and uh, oh the what is this uh, 150 or 200 200 year old uh, working farm. There's a lot that goes on here. Uh, unfortunately it's February and we're not going to get to see a whole lot of it. But so in the summertime they have what's called Symphony on the Prairie and the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra puts on uh, 12 concerts throughout the summertime. And all that area back there seats 8,500 people. Um, in 2023, they featured the music of Harry Potter, uh, the Star Spangled Fourth of July. They had tributes to uh, Marshall Tucker, the Fab Four, uh, Journey, Billy Joel, Elton John. Uh, uh, they did a, a Raiders of the Lost Ark um, theme. They just have a lot of fun. And when you come out here, what you do is you uh, you bring your blanket and your maybe your lawn chairs and a picnic basket with uh, dinner or you know some snacks to eat on and your favorite uh, beverage. And hey, it's a good time, it really is. I know people that have like tickets for the whole season, all 12 nights. I usually make it out once, maybe twice at the most, but uh, hey, I have a busy summer, so. But hey, it is a good time. Okay, let's uh, finish our music tour with uh, the cream de la cream, uh, let's go look at Ruoff Music Center. This is Ruoff Music Center. Now, it's February and things are buttoned up really tight. Uh, they'll probably throw me out if they see me back here, but at any rate, I'll flash you some photos. You've got to, got to think about this. This seats 25,000 people and uh, they have a complete lineup during the summer of all genres of music, all-star lineup. You can get a season pass even and uh, ticket sales for this are just out of this world. In fact, in 2018, Ruoff sold more tickets than any other outdoor music venue in the entire world and year in and year out, they're in the top five. I mean, just crazy. 
Now, if you get the uh, Premier or the Legends Pass, uh, parking passes, you can pull right up to the turnstiles, you can tailgate, you can walk right in, and then uh, at the end of the night, you don't have to sneak out early, you can stay till the very end, you catch the Encore, you walk out, it's five minutes to get out of the parking lot, and you're another, what, two, three, five minutes home? Hey, it's a great time. We're gonna stop into two of the area's top golf courses and then check out Top Golf, which is always a great time, even if you're not a golfer. Hey, let's talk golf. Fishers has been ranked by one golf magazine or another as the number two most underrated golf community in the entire United States. So I asked uh, my stepson, Seve, and one of his former college teammates, which were the best golf courses in Fishers. And they both independently came up with the same two names, River Glen and Ironwood. We're gonna take a tour of both of them uh, in just a second here. It's a uh, breezy day in February, and uh, while it's pretty comfortable, the course is closed because it's wet right now, and they're trying to get it into shape. But uh, this course is really pretty. They call it uh, Nature's Course. It sits along the White River, and um, it is a really delightful course to play. I'm gonna walk around here and see what we can see. Got 18 holes here, plus a driving range. They have uh, men's, women's, and junior leagues. They also have a very nice large pool and pool memberships. Uh, they also have a lot of event space here. They do banquets. In fact, uh, years ago when I ran a mortgage company, we used to do our uh, celebration uh, breakfast meetings here. Very nice. Uh, there's three memberships. There's a regular, a junior, and a family fun, which includes the pool. But just standing here, you can really see just how pretty this course is. Nice big deck up there to look out over all of this. Really beautiful. River Glen Country Club. Okay, I'm at Ironwood Golf Club in uh, Fishers, Indiana. And it is the end of February. And look at that parking lot. It is full of golfers out playing. How cool. They've got a driving range. Nice. Lots of woods, water. And then over here, uh, they've got 27 hole course. Wines all over the place. Very pretty. Good course to play on. Well maintained. They uh, have a variety of leagues. Uh, a full junior program with leagues, camps uh, for kids all the way from five and up. They've got uh, the driving range and lessons. And they have memberships for uh, singles, family, junior, senior, and young professionals. So take your pick. And then up there at the clubhouse, they also have some banquet facilities. This is uh, a course that if you move to Fishers, Indiana, you just might want to play. While we're talking golf, let's talk top golf. Uh, this is a Tuesday afternoon in February, and the parking lot still has a good number of cars, but this will fill up and uh, be crazy about half the time. Inside, they've got a hundred climate-controlled bays, and this is more like going bowling than it is playing golf. I mean, you don't have to have your own clubs. It's like uh, when you go to the bowling alley, and yeah, there's some people that walk in with all the official gear, and they've got their own ball and bag and all that, and shoes. But, uh, you know, the rest of us go in there, pick a ball out, stumble to the uh, lane, and uh, throw it down there. Well, here at Top Golf. Um, it's kind of the same. You don't have to have your own clubs. Uh, there's no cost to rent them. Um, they have all sorts of events and you can see the bays here from the outside and then uh, out there into a hitting area. The uh, balls are uh, high tech and they score for you. They do all kinds of events and games. And uh, one of the neat things is there's like a bar and a restaurant. There's 200 TV scattered throughout. And uh, there's even uh, fire pits up on top of the uh, rooftop terrace. So this is great for uh, old birthday parties and uh, other kinds of get togethers. Uh, companies uh, do outings here. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And you know, you get to hit a bucket of balls and if you don't want to hit the whole bucket, somebody else will hit yours and uh, you can sit down and drink. Hey, it's a good time one way or another. Join me as we tour amazing shopping destinations plus the fabulous foodie scene. I'll share a couple of my faves so you can add them to your must try list. Get through here, it's got a, just a really wide variety of shops and really good restaurants and in the areas surrounding uh, as well. 
so tons and tons of uh, retail shops and uh, food places and what have you. You've got uh, livery here, which is, oh, I'd call upscale Mexican. It's a Cunningham property, and all of their restaurants are great. You've got Ford's Garage, which has uh, oh, really good burgers. And it's kind of interesting, fun place, uh, the way some of their marketing and, and just little things like uh, napkins and, oh, different things that they do inside that really are kind of interesting make it kind of fun you got a total wine for all your uh, beer and wine needs you can't find it there I'm not sure you can find it anywhere over here you got DSW and Ben's Warehouse and oh, just all sorts of different places. I'm going to take a ride down this little street. Very walkable. You got an old navy here. You got Lita, Express, K Jewelers, Victoria's Secret, Soma. Fun place to shop. More shopping than I can do. Through 21, finish line. American Eagle over here. Five guys. Yats. The Three Dog Bakery. My wife spends too much money there. Up on the corner here we have uh, Pies and Pints. Pretty good pizza, real good salads. Over here is Stone Creek, another Cunningham property, one of my more favorite restaurants. And right in front of us is Dick's Sporting Goods. So just all kinds of uh, opportunity here to satisfy your retail and dining pleasure. Got a big movie theater to go along with it. We're getting ready to head into the yard and I wanted to stop just on the outskirts here. This is Portillo's and uh, I'm not a big fast food guy but this is a place I make exceptions for. When I was in high school uh, in Chicagoland these were little hot dog carts on the corner and we would go there at the end of the night and get a Chicago dog or an Italian sa uh, sausage sandwich or their big beef and uh, boy I think they're the best in the world I like my uh, big beef with sweet peppers and I like it dipped try it we're coming into the yard which is a recent development maybe in the last five years uh, lots of restaurants uh, other shops as well uh, this is the Hamilton uh, County Tavern and Kitchen it is a Hughes culinary property they are fabulous all of them make a little right here on the cobblestone street got uh, some upscale apartments up above some different uh, types of shops like uh, oh uh, hot sauna and athletic annex over here you have rise which is an excellent uh, breakfast place you have Kincaid's meat market which uh, goes back for many many decades some salons you've got a winery you've got slap fish you've got a Mexican cantina here on the corner and right here you have one of my very favorites, which is San Giovese. It's one of the better Italian places around. They have good lasagna. They have maybe the best chicken parm in the entire city. Uh, over here you have Sun King Brewery. Uh, everybody loves their uh, cream ale. You've got the Test Kitchen. And then over here 
we have the Havana Cigar Lounge, if you're into that, and then the 1933 Lounge, and the 101 Beer Pub. And there's a few others too. Um, the 1933 Lounge is interesting. It's another Hughes Culinary uh, property. And you can notice up there on the sign, it says 1933 Lounge by St. Elmo. Well, St. Elmo is uh, the most famous steakhouse in the city. It opened in 1902. People from all over the country uh, eat there when they're in town. All the, you find all the celebrities and sportscasters and all of that. Um, it was named because uh, during the Prohibition years, there was a speakeasy above St. Elmo's. And uh, so this property right here, the 1933 Lounge, is modeled after the uh, a speakeasy. My wife and I ate there the other night for Valentine's Day. It was great. They have to die for shrimp cocktail, uh, prime steaks, and I had a slab of prime rib that was just fabulous. Um, hey, it's something you might want to check out. Coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success. We're about to put the winter months behind us and enter the spring selling season. Currently, there are 427 homes in Hamilton County with four sale signs in the front yard. That's 12% fewer than a year ago, and that's causing prices to remain sticky. Basically, they're unchanged from a year ago with the median price being $420,000. But so right today, you can still find a house for sale for $230,000. Or hey, you can go to the other end of the spectrum and there's one on the market for over $8 million. Unlike Austin, San Francisco, and Boise, our market has slowed only slightly. A year ago, it took 10 days to sell a house, and now, oh my God, it takes 13 days. Price per square foot has increased just from $165 to $175, and that's basically due to the larger number of new construction homes being sold. Hey, not only is everything brand spanking new, but builders are offering 30-year fixed rate mortgages as low as 4.99%. You might wanna give me a call. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday we do a tour of new construction homes for sale. On Thursday we do a walkthrough of existing homes for sale in their surrounding neighborhoods. And on Saturday we give you a feel for what it's like to live in Indiana. So whether you're buying or selling, know that I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. Hey, if you found this video helpful, you'll love this next one. Watch it right now.